next on Good Taste. It's a fiesta for your family from theirs. It's a good way to get your fiesta in. Plus, where can you find the best barbecue in the Lone Star State? Oh my goodness, look how tender that pork is. And shrimp and grits for breakfast. Get ready for a Texas sized treat. It's the only thing that I eat. Good day starts right now. everyone and welcome to Good Taste Season 6. We're thrilled to be back for another season. Truly, it's our best one yet. That's because this year we're not only celebrating some of the best restaurants in Texas, we're celebrating the folks who worked tirelessly to make it all happen. One of the things I've learned these past few months is how important our restaurant community is to our lives. These right. folks are like our extended family. Their hospitality, warm smiles, the passion behind their food. So we hope you're hungry because this season of Good Taste is filled to the brim with good food, remarkable people, and a whole lot of love. Fresh pan dulce, flour tortillas, frozen margaritas, and flaming fajitas. And it's very near to what my mama used to make. These are the Tex-Mex tastes and traditions that put San Antonio on the map. And if you've been watching Good Taste, you'll know a Familia Cortez restaurant when you see one. When you walk in, you instantly uh, recognize all of the tinsel and the colors. Absolutely. I mean, it's a party every day, right? Ah, life celebration every day, Tanji. Yes. Absolutely. For four generations, the Cortez family has fed and entertained Texas and tourists alike. But we're not in Market Square anymore. After seven decades of dominating downtown, now Northsiders can enjoy these iconic eats and mariachi treats at Mi Familia in the Rim. Mm. The test of a restaurant is the nacho. It passes. But you don't create 70 years of success like this without learning how to survive trying times. Being a long time, four generations uh, in this family, I would imagine COVID is one of the more challenging obstacles that you guys have faced. And you guys did something really fun here to make up for the fact that life as we knew it had come to a halt. My grandparents, you know, started their business in 1941. And all of our lives, they have drilled us about savings, about precaution, about taking care of, you know, this business at all costs. And one of the things is you stand up and you fight. You gotta fight for every employee that is in your business, so you need to create business, and how are you going to do that to survive? But as Fiesta came around, it's like, oh gosh, you know, there's no Fiesta. How can there be no Fiesta? Nonsense. In April, hundreds of hungry San Antonians turned out to meet Familia to get their Fiesta favorites drive-through style. Delicious. Everything's so fresh and very clean in these days and times, so um, definitely we'll be back. While the decor and mariachi museum may look familiar, there's an evolution underway at Mi Familia. Mi Familia kind of was very, very rooted in our past, but as you go through the restaurant and things look a little different in some of our rooms, but pleasantly. One of those differences? Mi Familia celebrates the rise of the female mariachi. They are excellent. They, I mean, the old songs, Mexican songs and all, it brings us back to, you know, when the, we were the, younger. The menu at Mi Familia has plenty of familiar comfort classics. I love the chicken enchiladas and mole. And, and my favorite are the regular enchiladas with the sauce. 
the tres colores, chicken enchiladas, are covered in colors of the Mexican flag with tart tomatillo, spicy ranchero, and creamy sour cream sauces. But the most popular item at Mi Familia? Feast your eyes on the chicharron de ribeye. Longtime friend, Chef Gerardo Carvajal, shows us how it's done. We started with the ribeye, with a wonderful piece of ribeye. I know, you look at this gorgeous ribeye and you think, wow, we're going to chop that up, right? Yeah. Sizzled in a smoking hot cast iron pan and served with a big bowl of glorious handmade guacamole. Last item will be our olive oil. How interesting, okay, because yes. I don't put it in mine at home, but I will now. Try it. Oh, wow, oh, okay. that is good. But no trip to Mi Familia is complete without Pan Dulce from the Panaderia. It's handmade and it's very special, very rich part of our culture here in the restaurant and our Mexican culture in general. Many thanks to the Familia Cortez for keeping us all fed for so many years and for doing it all con mucho gusto. Wonderful. Salud to a healthy future. Salud to that. Talk about the ultimate social distancing. I'm in the Goya kitchens here in Houston and executive chef Fernando Desa is way up there near New York City. Hey, Fernando. How are you, Tanji? I'm fantastic. I miss seeing you face to face, but hey, this is the second best thing, right? That's true. We're gonna get drink some flavors. All right, what are we making today? So we did, today we're making a Goya style jambalaya using our Goya yellow rice that is quick, amazing, and with a lot of flavor. To start, we're gonna get the gooey sausage and the ham, and we're gonna saute. Okay, so what do we do next? Now, in the same pan, we're gonna add a little bit more of the Goya Sorbetian olive oil, and we wanna saute. Kick it up a notch. Chili powder. Even more flavor. We're gonna add the shrimp that we previously seasoned with some Goya adobo with pepper. And we're gonna sear, so you can see all those flavors coming together. Oh yeah, I can smell them. They smell amazing. Then we're gonna add the Goya yellow rice. It's so convenient. All the seasoning are there. So mix it together. Then you simmer it and you cover it for 25 minutes. This looks amazing. Mm. There's a lot of flavor going on in here. This is fantastic. I love it. We've got the recipe online. Fernando, thank you. Coming up, who has the best mouth-watering barbecue in the state? The food is great. Everything smoky taste, atmosphere. We'll take you there next. Cisco, at the heart of food and service. Welcome back. We've eaten mountains of barbecue over the years. Brisket, pulled pork, sausage. Texas is a meat lover's paradise. There's great barbecue in just about every town in the Lone Star State. But some joints are so darn good, they're worth lining up for time and time again. This is what it smells like in Little Lockhart, Texas. Oh my gosh, that smoky, Texas-y taste. Turn down Main Street and you'll find one of the oldest family-run barbecue joints in the state the original Black's Barbecue. Here at Black's, we spell barbecue B-E-E-F. <laughs> you know. Kent and his son, Barrett, are stoking the famous flames of this family affair. Best I've ever had. One bite of their juicy brisket, slow smoked over seasoned post oak, sealed in a perfectly peppered bark, and you'll be sold too. Sink your teeth into moist and meaty monster beef ribs. Melt in your mouth baby backs. And rings and rings of spicy sausage. It's an ambitious sample there, Ken. Well, this is Texas. You know, <laughs> the samples are big. Mm. <laughs> you must go to Black's for barbecue. <laughs> Next stop, Dallas for some of the best brisket and pulled pork we've ever tasted. Deep in the heart of Deep Ellum, Dallas trendy Eastside Art District is a smoking down-home barbecue joint, simply called Pecan Lodge. On the menu, 
the usual smoked meat, sandwiches, sides, sweets. From the pit, tender, juicy brisket sealed with the smoky seasoned bark. Yeah, it's really tender, it's delicious. The food is great, everything smoky taste, atmosphere. You'll want to try the fall off the bone ribs, pork and beef. Don't overlook the pulled pork. Oh my goodness, look how tender that pork is. Fun and friendly, the Khan Lodge is a perfect gathering place for friends and family. Most restaurants, if you saw a line out the door and you thought you were going to wait an hour, two hours, like, no, I don't think so. But folks waiting in line for good barbecue, it, it's like this, I can't wait mood. Right, right, right. Well, it's kind of like going to Disneyland. You know, you know you're going to go, um, you're going to wait in some lines, but, you know, the ride's worth it. Always friendly. Next, we're a hitch and a ride to Houston for a joint that's been slinging meat for more than half a century. Central Texas style barbecue has been smoking up sensational meats in Pearland since 1969. Nothing fancy, just brisket done the old fashioned way. Slow smoked over fire and wood with a dark crispy bark on the outside, moist and juicy on the inside. There's nothing better than brisket when it comes out of the smoker. That's true, mm, just that moment. The lines form early here and are the norm. I will tell you, everything here is amazing. And the food is remarkable. Just the family itself is absolutely incredible. Many of the dishes are named after family members, like the Devon Special, a big handful of brisket love, made with chopped brisket, simmered in homemade barbecue sauce, stacked on a soft bun, and topped with two cream cheese stuffed jalapenos. Come meet the family and taste the flavors of home. 50 years in the making at Central Texas Style Barbecue. It's their sense of making us all feel like family, why we love to come here. And the food's awesome. Hope you're still hungry. Take a look at this, a beautiful quinoa power bowl with avocado, pineapple, and parsley. This is gonna be so good and it's so easy. The PS de Resistance, we are topping it with barbecue chicken tenders, everybody. You're gonna love this dish. Your entire family will love this dish. Comes together in no time and just about everybody in your family could make this dish. I'm with Claire Souls at John Souls Foods telling us about how easy and simple this is and good. It honestly is the easiest, simple thing to make. I make it all the time, especially like when I'm in a rush and I just want something healthy that's gonna keep me moving through the day. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this uh, brown rice quinoa little salad here. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our black beans. Nice little hit of protein there. Oh yeah. Some roasted corn. And then we are gonna take our fanned avocado just for a little bit of creaminess and just a little extra flavor. And this is a roasted pineapple salsa just for a little sweetness and kick and color. Uh, it just really gives it a little nice finish. Okay, and then we're gonna add our barbecue chicken tenders. These are so good and they're so easy. You can microwave them, then you can do them in the oven. The barbecue is my favorite. I put it on so many things, but this might be my favorite recipe. Now for the best part. Mm. That is really good. I love all the flavors. The black beans, the corn. Get a little pineapple and the barbecue sauce on the chicken. It's awesome. We've got all the details online. Claire, thank you. Get ready to pop a cork. My wine finds are coming up. But first, what secret ingredient has Houstonians going nuts to get here for breakfast? Good taste spills some secrets when we return. We'd love to share good taste. Head to our website at goodtaste.tv where you'll find delicious recipes from top chefs, my latest wine finds, and restaurant recommendations. Plus, you can see all of our episodes right here. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. Good Taste with Tangie is brought to you in part by HEB. You haven't seen Hustle until you've seen the creative chaos of this kitchen. You're in the best place in the city for breakfast. This is one of the busiest breakfast places in Houston, a bustling hotspot 
it all started because two people fell in love. So we both worked for Boston Chicken, which is now Boston Market, 100 years ago. I was interested in her, and I felt maybe she was a little interested in me. Well, she told me it was love at first sight. Yeah. 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 Stacy and Brock added a new chapter to their love story when they opened Pecan Creek Grill in 2011. I think Pecan Creek just offers a, a great family atmosphere. Melt in your mouth breakfast plates are whipped up all day here. But come early. Service stops at 2. There's good reason for that. His name is Colton. When we decided to do this on our own, it was really important that family time be at the center of it all. We also wanted to make sure that our son knew his parents. Being able to get done every day between two and three frees up our time to be with our son. The food has that homey comfort feeling too. Sweet banana pecan brioche French toast. Super sized stacks of pancakes oozing with sweet syrup. These are for real. That is the real size of the pancakes. That is the buttermilk pancakes, and we'll bake any fresh fruit or nuts into them that you want. We'll bake bacon in them, we'll bake our granola in them. Uh, pancakes and bacon, it's the only thing that I eat. The savory dishes will make your mouth drop too. The hearty New Mexican omelet is jam-packed with oodles of flavor. Nine hour slow roasted pulled pork, our take on a really authentic green chili sauce. The omelet. The omelet is fantastic. So are the decadent shrimp and jalapeno cheese grits, topped with irresistible pecan smoked peppered bacon. Shrimp and grits for breakfast. For breakfast? Very popular weekend dish. Healthy salads play a starring role at Pecan Creek. This one's chock full of vibrant greens, tangy feta cheese, mixed berries, and those sweet Texas pecans. One of the most unique bites on Pecan Creek's menu is the homemade chorizo sausage. And it took me about five years to develop the recipe, and uh, I think we've got it pretty well perfected. The sausage starts with a colorful mix of aromatic spices, ancho chilies, roasted garlic, and fiery chili arbols pump up the heat and the flavor. It's all mixed with fresh ground pork. Did you all grind in-house? We grind it in-house, absolutely. We're making sausage. We are making, so this is the sausage <laughs> making, that's right. I'm getting in with my hands. This is Go the way for we it. Do it. Yeah. So. <laughs> this is the only way you're really gonna get all that pork yep. infused with all of the spices. That savory sausage shows up in a lot of Pecan Grill's dishes, like their signature huevos con chorizo. We serve it with a little bit of our homemade refried beans and then a smaller portion of our fresh hash browns. You call that small? That's the small <laughs> portion of the hash browns. We want you to waddle out. <laughs> Whoa, that is phenomenal. You need to sell this, like, to the yeah, stores. Maybe we should open a restaurant. <laughs> maybe you should. Yeah. yeah. We just like to serve food in a fun and comfortable environment. And, um, it's a crazy business. So you gotta be a little crazy. <laughs> Might as well have a sense of humor, right? Yeah, if you don't have a sense of humor, we're probably going to run you off. <laughs>
all too well. An Indian summer. This Indian summer is from Becker Vineyards. It's a Cab Merlot and Nouvedra blend with juicy bean cherries, tart raspberries, and just a finish of vanilla and black pepper. I dare say I even get a little bit of roses on the nose. The Becker Indian Summer is only $10.98 a bottle. As always, I found all my wines at my favorite place to shop. Probably yours too, H-E-B. When visiting Houston, the Good Taste team loves to stay at the beautiful Royal Sinesta, right in the heart of Uptown, conveniently located near the Galleria. We want to help you find ways to support your favorite restaurants during these challenging times. We have a large list of restaurant choices, including patio options, takeout, and special menus at goodtaste.tv. That's also where you'll find all the recipes from today's show. As always, follow us on social media at Instagram at Good Taste TV, Facebook at Good Taste with Tangie, and Twitter. I want to thank our wonderful sponsors for making this season possible. And I want to thank you. Without your support and your enthusiasm each and every week, we wouldn't be here. We love you and we appreciate you. Stay safe, everyone. And we'll see you next week right here. Cheers to good taste.